What is up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's your girl JD here back with another video and today we're going to be talking about the Disney film Inside Out Part 2. I just recently went to the movie theater to watch it and I actually went alone. <laughs> I know what some of you are probably saying. You're just like, did you really go to the theater just to watch a kid's movie? Like, yes, yes I did, okay? <laughs> Yes, I did go by myself and I actually went for my birthday. I really liked the first one. I was going to actually originally see Bad Boys, but they only had it in the VIP theater, which I think the tickets are like 40 something dollars. I wasn't doing that, okay? I, I was not doing that. So I just decided to take my butt down to the regular theater to see what they had showing. And I was like, okay, let's go see Inside Out because I didn't know they had even made a second part. And I just saw it and I was like, perfect, let's go watch that and I enjoyed myself <laughs> I really did but I'm just gonna quickly get into why I actually really ended up liking this film and so many other people liked it as well so inside out is pretty much kind of where they have the emotions of a person or human being I guess your emotions are pretty much personified and I thought the idea was honestly brilliant because I do feel like obviously we constantly have this battle with our emotions and logic and all this other stuff that's going going on in our head and we kind of sometimes talk about it in a way where they're kind of like people talking in our head so it makes sense why you would personify it and make it into animation I think that is just genius so they're pretty much working in this child's mind aka Riley so Riley is the name of the child and these emotions are trying to keep things under control so the emotions that we start out with we have happiness disgust anger fear and sadness so they're pretty much kind of like your basic feelings and happiness decides to send all the not so good thoughts that Riley would have from time to time and she would just send them to the back of Riley's mind so that she didn't think about them and that she would only focus on you know the good in her life but Riley is now a teenager in this part two and now the emotions are changing and they become a lot more complex hormones are raging the body is physically changing and puberty is officially starting so if you guys have gone through the teenage phase like I have you would know that it is a rough ride okay you while you're going through it don't see it as you slightly going crazy like how my dad says kind of lose our minds for a bit <laughs> for a couple years you know and then we just kind of calm back down in our 20s a little bit the raging of the hormones and everything everything gets very heightened okay and we really see that play out in this film and I think they actually executed it really well as well. So now that Riley is a teenager, she's now trying to succeed in hockey. She joins this camp because the coach saw her, saw that she was pretty talented, wanted her to come to this camp for the summer to train and whatnot. And now we have this introduction of, I guess, more complex emotions, which would make sense. Like I said, we become a little bit more complex when we reach that teenager phase. So now we have the feelings of anxiety, embarrassment, envy and ennui but that wasn't really an emotion I think it was just more so the need to fit in or be cool but they call that particular I guess personification on we but they didn't really have an emotion name if that makes sense so anxiety now sets a plan in motion to get Riley in with the cool kids and all the other emotions like I mentioned embarrassment ennui and geez and envy they're trying to also I guess support anxiety with this new plan but when it comes to the more basic emotions that I mentioned earlier happiness anger fear all of those they're looking at anxiety like what are you doing you're making Riley into something that she isn't so either way they're not on board with anxiety's plan and anxiety decides to package them up and send them away so that she could you know execute whatever she's trying to do so they try to get back to the control room or control area in Riley's I guess brain and it gets pretty interesting because you see Riley really start to do things just so she could please others which makes sense because because when you're a teenager you're really trying to find yourself find what crowd you fit in and I think the stages in which that happened in the movie it makes perfect sense chronologically speaking because that's kind of how it goes in real life too so I think 
they did a really good job with that because again like I was saying you're really trying to find yourself figure out who you are what you like but in the process you kind of lose yourself a little bit as well so yeah eventually anxiety she takes over and she realizes that her plan is faltering and that nothing's going to plan but eventually sadness they actually had sadness be the one to try and get back to the control room and she does but embarrassment actually has to help hide her so that she could actually go through with the plan of bringing back the other emotions so embarrassment I guess has a change of heart now he's just like you know what I want to have the rest of the emotions come back because I don't really fully believe in anxiety's plan for Riley so sadness eventually she starts controlling things with Anvi's remote now she is trying to I guess get Riley back on track and it is honestly a roller coaster and it's literally a roller coaster when you're a teenager in real life so again it makes sense now I think when it comes to anxiety and this particular scene that I want to talk about really quickly it really kind of made me feel very emotional I think that was the anxiety attack I guess or panic attack that Riley ends up having because anxiety eventually takes over and she goes into overdrive trying to make up for these things that she did wrong she ended up hurting one of her friends trying to make herself look good in front of the coach so that the coach picks her to go on the team and she just finds herself doing so many things that isn't her that isn't lining up with her personality and what she would do so now that anxiety eventually goes into overdrive trying to fix everything and course correct basically Riley eventually crumbles and she is stuck in this like anxiety attack and a lot of people are saying that wow this really is what an anxiety attack feels like like you're just in overdrive and you don't really know what to do it's just like a like oh moment so eventually happiness takes over and they're trying to still go ahead with executing the plan of trying to I guess bring back Riley's old self but now she kind of realizes we can't just keep doing this we have to let Riley decide what she wants to do have her figure out what she wants to be who she wants to be so eventually they just kind of remove this sense of self that they thought would be good for Riley Riley and they just let Riley kind of form her own state of being and they pretty much kind of let her accept all facets of herself whether it be good or bad you can't just keep putting everything on the back burner there are going to be bad thoughts that you have you are going to have moments of insecurities you are going to have areas in your life that they suck you know, like there are going to be moments where, you know, things don't really work out and that's fine. So I think eventually happiness realizes you're not going to be happy all the time. You're not going to always be thinking happy thoughts, positive thoughts. But eventually you have to realize that there needs to be a balance. You can't just keep suppressing everything. So in the end, all the emotions end up working together. And obviously there's not gonna be perfect harmony because everybody's so different. But I think it was a very good way to wrap up the film because I think it helps people to realize that not everything is gonna always be perfect. Life is not perfect. You are gonna make mistakes. Things are gonna go wrong. Things are going to happen whether they be happy or sad they're gonna induce certain emotions but you just have to figure out how to gauge that and I think that this was just such a genius movie it's like I can't really even express too much into words why I really love this movie so much because I think it definitely does a very good job with I guess communicating to both children and also to adults which is what Disney used to do in past movies but I think over time it just kind of faded away but yeah Disney did a really good job with this for once I think a good bit of their films it just hasn't really had that level of like communication you know like it didn't communicate well like what the idea was it just felt like oh we're just gonna do this and run with this idea because it's cool and people like this right now so let's do it you know what I mean so I thought they did a really good job with this one and I think it just actually recently hit the billion dollar mark y'all correct me on that if I'm wrong but I thought it was really good and I'm not ashamed to say that I went as a grown woman okay just turned 28 to go see a kids movie okay because it was really good but y'all let me know what your thoughts were on this if you watched it already let me know down below in the comments I'll catch you all in the next one peace <laughs>